Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing properly, you're currently watching me in black and white. Because this is the latest instalment in my Zodiac series. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. Today, we're discussing the flower associated with the zodiac sign of Aries. So, my lovelies, if you want to find out which flower or flowers are associated with Aries, what their meanings are, which palette I use to create this look, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, and many, many other things. And my darlings, you have absolutely the best spot in the house. As I've said for some time now, oft here echoed elsewhere by less imaginative channels. But they haven't got Slam Sammy the Sloth the Straw to join them. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And indulge. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I am proper struggling today with this eye. It has been streaming pretty much since I got up at half past four. It's now eight o'clock, but I need to get this filmed because this is the next instalment for Aries and I am doing the flower today. Which, um, there are two flowers for Aries. There are daisy and a sweet pea. Now, in terms of the flower, flowers are done by uh, calendar month. Astrological signs are not. So what I choose to do, Aries runs from March 21st to August, uh, uh, April 19th. So whenever the first of the month falls, whichever star sign the first of the month falls in, so in this case, April 1st, I'll choose April's flower for Aries. If you were born, if you're an early Aries baby, if you're a March baby, you might uh, want to check back into Pisces because you may find you are more called towards those flowers. So, hopefully while I'm waffling, I've put a picture up here. So you can see my colours are basically white, pink, yellow. So I thought I'd grab this out, the Zodiac Glove Signs, because I haven't played with this for a while. Um, and I'm thinking of doing an all shimmer look using the baked shadows around the outside. Um, I know a lot of people don't like using all shimmers particularly once you get the right side of 40. I refuse to call it the wrong side because if I'm there it can't be wrong. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to show you that you know if you only have a palette that has shimmers in you can still produce a really beautiful look because Depending on the type of brush you use, depends how the shimmer looks. I'll explain more about that as I'm doing it. This is still a teaching channel. My chronic pain means I go quite slowly anyway, but I also aim this at all skill levels. So I want complete beginners 
who've never picked up a brush before to be able to follow this as easily as, I don't know, Jacqueline Hill. Could I have named a more problematic? Yeah, I probably could actually, thinking about it. Anyway, um, as part of that, if you need to speed me up, there are speed widgets. Feel free to use it. But one of the things that I have noticed, I've got deep set eyes, which for a long time I thought were hooded lids because the way that your eyeshadow wears through the day is very similar for both eye types. But the workarounds for both are very different. So I did a lot of research during my painsomnia moments. Um, I do that a lot. If I've got money in my account, I shop, which is dangerous. And if I haven't, I research new techniques, I research old techniques, because sometimes some of the older ways of doing things can produce a really, really classic look. So I've done a little clip explaining the difference between deep set and hooded lids and the workarounds for both, which I'm going to pop in here in just a minute. Now, if you've never seen my films before, when I'm in tutorial stage, I'm very, very close up, so you just see my eyes. So it's going to be very, very up in your face. Uh, so please don't jump and scream. But once the clip is finished, I will be back to apply some coloured pigments to my eyelids. And let's hope and pray that my eye stops watering long enough me to get a decent look. Otherwise it might be a Jackson Pollock on one side. Here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crime Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye 
deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going for this sort of tapered blending brush. Very, very soft, very, very loose. Whatever the size of the head of the brush, <clears throat> that's how far it's going to blend it out. Now, if you are applying, normally when you apply a shimmer you use a flatter packing style brush and that gives you the dense coverage that you want, it packs it on, it gives you the shimmer. When you apply with a blending brush you do tend to get a fair bit of fallout so do this before you do Yes, I know how pink this looks. I'm sorry. Can you please try and ignore it? Um, when you're blending, a lot of times you can buff away the shimmer pigments and it leaves behind the colour pigments. It's more like a satin or a matte even than a shimmer simply by using a different brush. So we want a very, very loose blending brush so that it can buff really well but we don't want the head to be too splayed out because we don't want to splay it too far up so hence the tapered blending brush that's the kind of shape you're looking for okay always hold the brush at the very end so you put as little pressure on your eyes as possible and we're going to do the, um, the Viennese warts of blending which basically means natural turns towards the nose a fleck or when we get there and reverse turns to come back out again I'm 46 years old I've lost over 14 stone that's over 200 pounds so the skin on my eyelids moves even more so this side you can see these super deep creases I've got here where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic so by doing circular movements we're very gently moving the skin on our eye so that rather than using the windshield wiper we don't get that tiger striping effect but we're doing it in a way that we are not pulling our eye around too much okay hopefully that has all made sense um, if not, bear with and it will make more sense as we go through. So, funnily enough, I'm going to go into Aries. And I'm going into the, um, the baked shadow on the outside, which is like a, a mid-toned pink. Start from the outside here, because if it deposits too much pigment and you have to blend like heck to get rid of it, so much easier when you haven't got your nose in the way. Just a bit of a tip there for you. I'm going to very gently, starting just above my natural crease, and start blending that 
all the way across to the middle. A bit of a bounce, reverse the direction and come back again. Now obviously because we are buffing away a lot of the shimmer pigment, when you're working with shimmers it does take a little bit longer to build the colour up but it is absolutely worth it. I mean you can see this is going on so nicely and so smoothly and there really is no reason to worry about using shimmers through your crease so long as you use the right type of brush obviously if I was using a packing brush this would look awful by now maybe settling into all my lines and wrinkles and making me look like a dinosaur up in the dark get on the floor everybody like the dinosaur boom boom I can look a look a boom 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 I can look a boom boom anybody else remember that song or is it just me <coughs> so you can see that's given us a really gentle wash of that pink but without it being majorly shimmery it's more of a satin now than a shimmer which is exactly the effect that I wanted because sweet peas are very very delicate little flowers so I'm now going to repeat the same thing on this eye now the reason that I do both eyes at the same time rather than doing one and then going back to do the other. Your eyes are not symmetrical, they are different shapes and sometimes you have to do a different shape of application to get them to look the same when your eyes are open because uh, unless you're Jimmy Chuck where you photoshop it and flip it over in photos yeah, your eyes are not symmetrical, they're not exactly the same, just like your brows aren't, and ladies like your boobs aren't, and gents like your balls aren't. You know, you've always got one bigger than the other. So it's always wise to sit back, relax your brows, and just check you've got the same shape. Now you can see it looks like I've gone up higher here but I've done exactly the same shape. So I now need to bring this one up here just ever so slightly at this point. Which had I done all my blending and put all my other colours on top, I wouldn't necessarily have spotted that. And then at the end of it you'd have a slightly unbalanced look but you wouldn't quite know why. If you're wondering why I'm not talking about any zodiacal uh, elements, the middle part of the film is teaching any information about the zodiac and the elements and what the flowers represent will be at the outro at the end so that people who are not interested in that sort of thing don't have to sit through it, they can just watch the tutorial. Right, I'm now going to go into Scorpio, which is a lighter pink. Again, into the blended shadow, into the baked shadow. Now, if you're going to blend two colours together, try and start off with half the brush on the colour you've already put down and half the brush on your bare skin. Because what this will do is it will give you a very gentle transition between the two colours so it's not easy to spot where one colour finishes and the next one starts you just get a very soft gradient now I do sometimes struggle here and here where I have almost like an eczema um, and I can struggle sometimes to get pigment to go on 
I just have to be very patient and just keep building. But you can see these are blending together quite beautifully at the moment. And you can't really see where one pink stops and the next one starts and that's exactly the effect that I wanted. So again, half on the colour you've already laid down, half on your skin, and blend. And again, we're relying on our friend the Viennese Waltz of Blend. If you try and think of the blending as windscreen wiper, Viennese Waltz, it's much easier when you're not watching a tutorial to remember what the movements are. I know that sounds daft, but it really does work, I promise you. Right, I'm going to go into a slightly more tapered brush. Like this. And I'm going to dip into... Do I do Taurus or do I want to do Gemini? Uh, I think... I think... Yeah, I think Taurus is going to work best. That's my star sign. <laughs> so I'm going to dip into the baked Taurus. And just through where my natural crease is, I'm going to add a bit of a depth of colour. Now if you've moved your crease, this is the point that you follow the new line that you've laid down. Because darker colours go backwards and lighter colours come forwards. So by putting a darker shade through this line here, it gives the illusion that that part of the eye goes back further. So if you have had to create a new crease, it will help the eyes of those looking at you. I'm just going to bring a little bit of that down onto the outer edge of the mobile lid and just give that a bit of a blend and a buff. This is very much like a like a coppery rose gold which is going to work well because I do want to use some yellow as well, or some gold. And I think this will blend better than if I'd used the Gemini shade. Now, with these deep creases that I have there, I do have to treat this lid slightly differently. Because the circular movement doesn't always work for me. So I apply it all get it all blended where I want it but then I have to check to see whether it's actually covered the creasing or not didn't do that badly that day that's good and again bring it down onto the outer edge of my lid, or my mobile lid I should say. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? If it's not been a good one I hope tomorrow's better. And if you're at the start of your day, well, I hope you're having a good one. I know Christopher's got me playing to him while he's in the shower, so I promise I'm not looking, Christopher, honest. 
Right. Spray, yeah. Right, I've got my cucumber spray here from iHeartRev to wet the brush after I've applied the pigment. And I'm going in with that flat packer brush that I showed you earlier and I'm going to go into the baked shadow for the shade Cancer which is this beautiful yellow gold as you can see. I'm just going to wet that brush. Just helps to prevent fallout and increase his shine. But now the, the ferrule is wet. So tuck it into your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening your bristles. Because then you won't have a brush, you'll have a stick. Because all your bristles will fall out. Right, so I'm going to pop this. Just onto the centre section of my mobile lid. Gently blend that out. And then using the tip of the bristles, buff it into the Taurus shade on the outside there. Dry the brush and reload the brush ready to do the other eye. I really like these palettes. I just wish they'd been. I understand why they've been laid out the way they have. But good lord, they're a nightmare to store and they're a nightmare to juggle as well because I haven't got a huge amount of space on my table in front of me. Right, so this eye I have to deal with differently when I do the inner corner. But the middle bit I can pretty much do. Same as I did the other eye. But I do tend to get more fallout this side. Because you can see how much more movement there is on this lid than there was on this one. And that is literally because it was pulled around when I was five years old. So we're talking 41 years ago. So don't pull your lids about. You might get away with it now, but give it a few years, you will see the damage. Again, just buffing that in. Like seal. So. This is the highlighter shade that's in the middle that everyone tends to forget about. But it's a gorgeous white gold. And I'm going to use this in the inner corner. Pull that out and gently drag it across the deeper gold. Again, dry the brush off. And now this is where I have to show you how I deal with the other eye differently. But in a way to cause as little damage to the eye as possible. So I'm just going to very gently stretch the eye out only as far as it needs to straighten out those creases and then I'm going to as quickly as I can apply and blend the shadow onto the lid and then let go drag that across the deeper gold if I don't do that what happens is the pigment builds up um, in the creasing and ends up as it dries through the day cascading down my face and into my eye and that's very painful and doesn't look too good either let's be honest right my lovelies I'm going to pause you while I go and 
pop some foundation and bits and bobs on and I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you now. I'm going to have to wait a little while before I get to talk to you again but to you my darlings it's going to be absolutely instant. So um, I'll see you right now I guess. I am back. Hello. Um, I used my pink honey brow thing again today. I am really liking this. I got honey glue strawberry sherbet. It looks like that. And you basically get your brush, stick it in, swirl it round and just brush it through. That simple. Really, really like that. Loving that, in fact. Um, and then I use this end to go into the matte Aries pink to colour the brows. Now, I love doing my brows this way because by using the soap dry, i.e. without wetting the brush, it stays sticky. So the powder has something to stick to. But then as you put the powder on, it sets, obviously, the soap. So it's a bit of a double bubble jobby, which is awesome. Sorry, I've got everything falling over on me right now. I'm trying to cover it smoothly and failing dismally. So, I'm going to use my flat top brush. I'm going to go back into Taurus, the baked shadow that we used here. I'm going to run that along. Be very careful when you're doing this after you've done your makeup because obviously fallout is real. And shimmer fallout does not like dusting away. And once you're the correct side of, not even 30, let alone 40, baking is not a friend. And by putting powder down to catch fallout, effectively you are baking. Um, Long term viewers know that I can't put anything on my lower lash line because it makes my eyes stream and seeing as I was having problems with this one this morning anyway I figured it was definitely not the day to try it. But that's why I like buffing out my lower lash line. So this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, flat topped and chunky, no will I me, which I love. So I'm going to dip into Scorpio, which is the lighter of the two pinks that I used up here. Again, the baked shadow, I'm just going to tap off. And I'm going to use that to gently buff the lower lash line and soften that line there. But you can see, and if anyone says to you, you can't build a look using just shimmers, yes you can. And you don't need a neutral brown to start a look off either. It's one of the reasons that when I did my pick series, I said you couldn't add in colours that weren't there. Because I didn't want people cheating and just putting brown in and then a copper colour on the lid. Mind you, the people that I collab with wouldn't do that anyway. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Now. I'm going to use my Ofra Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut Highlight. And an uber cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay oh, well over a decade ago now. To pop a little bit highlight under the tail of my brow both sides because apparently folks along with everything else gravity drags our brows down as we get older so 
popping a little bit of brightness underneath them gives them a nice lifted raised look and then I like to do the inner corner because we all have dark dimples just here and then I like to pull it under my tear duct and just blend it in with the shadow under the eye because particularly where I can't put anything in my waterline I think that just finishes the shape of the eye off really nicely right my lovelies I'm going to pause you one last time I'm going to chuck some more of this highlight on my face put some mascara on choose a lipstick and I'll be back with my finished look and some information about the flowers associated with Aries hey my lovelies I am back so Ofra glazed donut on the shiny parts of my face uh, I use my little mini IT superhero mascara and the um, cult candy cosmetics that I tried um, I think it's a couple of weeks back now on my channel in shade BB which if you're no longer supporting a certain uh, shall we say um, controversial beauty guru on here but you love his shade androgyny lipstick this is a very very close dupe um, it's equally lightweight on your lips and lasts as well as his formula so my little book of notes that sounds so much better when I have nails do you know they've opened pretty much everything that men are interested in? Pubs, sports, snooker holes, gyms. Have they opened the nail salons yet? No. I wouldn't mind, but nail salons are 90% female owned and run. And they all wear damn masks anyway, even before the uh, lager lager. Anyway, there is the picture of the uh, flowers that inspired this very soft look most unlike the kind of look I normally go for but bizarrely whenever I do soft looks like this I get told that I look a lot younger than I am so I'll take that so as I explained earlier the flower actually relates to April rather than to the astrological sign but because the 1st of April falls smack bang in the middle of Aries and because I had to associate a flower with it somehow this is how I've chosen to do it if these particular flowers and the meanings of them don't call to you check out my film on the Pisces flower and see if they are more your style likewise if you are towards the end of Aries and you're not quite sure they call to you once I filmed the Taurus one check those out and see if their flowers appeal to you more right so the flowers in question are the daisy and the sweet pea which obviously white and yellow and pale pink I believe sweet peas can be different colors but pale pink is the most common Despite its showers, April brings some beautiful flowers. That rhymes. How lovely. Daisies signify innocence, loyalty, love and purity. They're also the perfect gift for a confidant because they mean I'll never tell. Sweet peas, on the other hand, represent blissful pleasure or the ideal way to say goodbye. So sweet peas were equally used in wedding bouquets and uh, wedding garlands for blissful pleasure. But likewise, they were also often tucked into the hands of the deceased in the coffin prior to the lid being closed because they are the ideal way to say goodbye sweet but sad so that my darlings 
is the information about the flower associated with Aries. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it fun. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people, but sneakily they are leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious that you have been unsubscribed. Once you've done that, a cheeky little like, a comment, maybe even a share if you could manage it, would really help with the algorithm. And you know I love hearing from you. I read all of your comments and I try and reply to all of them as well. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Um, if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something that you enjoyed. Uh, either the information about Aries and its flower or the application or just me leathering away at you in what I've been told is a very calm, soothing voice. That being said, it would be wonderful if you two would like to join the 4F family. We are indeed the nicest family on YouTube. It's super easy to do. All you have to do is hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Then ring my bell. Ring my bell. And say yes and all of them. And repeatedly say yes and all of them until YouTube stop asking you the same damn question in different ways. Then hopefully you'll get told, oh I don't know, one in four of my films maybe? Even my husband doesn't get notified of all of them. So I'll keep track of it. That being said, there are an awful lot of other films you can watch. There's the two preceding episodes of this Aries uh, section. And if I, depending on when you watch this, the fourth one could be live now too. But there are the preceding three astrological signs that have their four films. I've got product reviews, I've got tutorials, I've got collabs, I've got challenges, I've got tag films. I even read you my favourite poem. It's bound to be something you like. So if you're looking for some me time, basically grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up and indulge, my darlings. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.